Drop in, guys. Get a drink, get a snack. We have a long one today. I am going to be ranking my entire Natasha Denona collection from worst to best. In total, we have 39 eyeshadow palettes. Can you believe Natasha Denona has launched 39 palettes in these last few years? Even more. There's some that I don't even have. I decided, I don't know what came over me last night, but since my mother and I will be separating our collections a bit, I would just go for the gusto and just rank every single one <laughs> that I can get my hands on. The next year when I do this, I will not have this many palettes, but yeah, um, a lot of these are not available. A lot of these are still available. We'll get into that, but obviously I collect Natasha Denona palettes. I love her brand. She has one of my favorite eyeshadow formulas, so I'm really excited to be raking these. I spent like two hours last night swatching all of these and placing them where I thought they would fit good, so it's really exciting. Let's get into it. Starting off with number 39. So this one, I suppose, quality-wise, is not the worst in the line, but it was definitely the one that I was most disappointed by. I had some higher expectations for it. And this is the Natasha Denona Zendo palette. I just do not jive with this palette at all. A large majority of that is due to personal preference. I really dislike this color story very, very heavily. In theory, I thought it looked pretty. Color theory-wise, it doesn't work together well because half of the palette is so 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 warm half of the palette is so 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 cool that I find these two don't mix well together so you're either getting a super warm look or a super cool look and I just don't like that I love this price point that this palette's at but I also feel like the quality here while it is good it's just not what I want from Natasha Denona I love her metallics and the metallics here are more so soft shimmers and that's not what I go for for Natasha Denona and I know a lot of you probably like that about this palette but for me I don't like it this is my preferences and so I don't like the color story. I don't like the formulas that she chose to add in here. It's missing the shimmer formulas that I go for when I want to use Natasha Denona. So yeah, all in all, I don't like this palette. 38 is the mini sunset palette. So this is one of the first mini palettes that she came out with and I can tell she totally tried to get one over on us with this. This is not her really good formula and we called it out quick. She said suggested that. But her first couple of launches with these, I was like, no, these are not her good formula. And I, I mean, I've used this actually a good number of times because it's great for travel, especially when she didn't have her newer options that she has now. This was all I had, so I traveled with it. But the shimmers are like not that good compared to what you know she's capable of. The mattes are fine, but one, I don't really like worn tones as much. They don't call out to me. And two, the quality in here was just a little disappointing based on my expectations for Natasha Denona. So that is why that's at number 38. 37 is a similar story. I just like the color story a little bit better, but same deal with the quality. This is the mini Lila palette. I mean, the color story is so pretty. You can definitely get a gorgeous look with this palette, but the road together is a little challenging. This shade is really disappointing and the mattes here are also not really buttery. They don't blend that well. They look a little patchy. So you do have to put a little bit of elbow grease in to get this palette to work. While it's very pretty, it's just disappointing quality. 36, we have another mini. <laughs> this is the mini Zendo palette. So this is the baby version of the last place palette here. And I oddly enough feel the same way about this palette that I do about the big Zendo. So first of all, this shade doesn't show up. It's very poor quality. You only have five shades, so that's disappointing. Number two, I've never really loved any of the looks that I've created with this palette. It's not terrible quality or anything, but the color story, again, kind of confuses me. I just feel like they don't mesh together that well. This is definitely a personal preference because I know a lot of you actually do like this palette, but it's just not one that I could get down with. Didn't love the looks I could create with it. 35 is the Cranberry palette. So this has since been reformulated. I do not have the reformulated version, so keep that in mind, but I do not love the quality of this as well. So for example, this shade is actually like a brighter pink as opposed to what it looks like in the pan. So that right there is a formula flaw. I do think that's been corrected, but so this is the palette that I have. This shade is a lot more sheer as well. The shimmers are just fine. This particular sh shade is absolutely beautiful, but again, it's just so pricey that it's unacceptable for the quality to be of that. But again, like I said, she reformulated it. It's been fixed. 
but I still have the old version. I don't like it. 34 is the Coral Palette. This is ranking where it's ranking simply because I truly forgot about this palette. There's nothing really special about it. Now, the quality in here is not bad. I don't have any disappointing stories to share with you, but you can absolutely get these colors a thousand times over already in her other palettes if you collect them like I do. And yeah, it's just not a special palette. It doesn't stand out to me. I don't have anything really else bad to say about it. I'm just not into it. 33 is a bigger palette and an older one. This is the Sunset palette. This is actually one of the palettes that ended up putting her brand on the map. Personal preference for color story. This is simply why I'm ranking it where I'm ranking it. I will wear warm tones. You guys see me wear warm tones all the time, but I am never really inclined to reach for palettes with a warmer toned color story. And this is like warm to the extreme. You have red colors, orange colors, and yellow colors. It's a bit much for me. So I'm just not really inclined to reach for this. I don't like the way it looks. That being said, I used it a couple months ago. Loved it. <laughs> the quality in here is fantastic. I couldn't deny that. This is staying with my mom. I'm not going to have it when I move. When I used it a couple months ago, I was like, oof but the quality is so good, but truly I just don't love the color story, and the colors that I do like in here I feel like are dupable, so not one that I needed, not one that I love. Yeah, 32 is similar to the Sunset palette, so I have very similar reasonings. So this is the Sunrise palette. I prefer this price point. The pans are a little bit smaller, but you get just as many colors, so that's partially a reason why this ranks above the Sunset palette, but I do kind of like the color story a little bit better, but you can see there are some very, very warm warm colors in here, yellows and reds and oranges, just colors I'm not as inclined to reach for. I like the colors in here better than the Sunset palette. It's not Natasha Denona's best palette in my opinion, but it's a good palette, just not drive in with the color story. Number 31 is a palette I don't believe you can really get anywhere anymore. This is the Tropic palette. Surprisingly, I like this a lot more than other people because I loved the colors in here. These neutral kind of pastel-y mattes were my favorite. I I would bring this with me on vacation and I would have so much fun with this. I went to Hawaii with this and I had a heyday with it. Granted, these shades down here are really not the best quality. That's why she came out with a mini of these reformulated, but I still had a lot of fun with them. I still found the colorful colors to be workable, but yes, at the time that I bought this, I was like, this is not Natasha Denona's best quality, but it ended up being a palette that I really wore a ton. I still have fun with it from time to time. Again, the mattes here, in my opinion, are unbeatable. I love them. They are so pretty. The bottom row certainly does need some work, but I love this palette. I really did, but I will admit it was not the best quality that it could have been. Coming in at number 30 is the Mini Metropolis palette. So this came out for the holiday season this year. I don't have anything bad to say about it. I just own these colors already in the Metropolis palette. There really wasn't anything special to me about it. I think it did make a beautiful holiday color story, and I know a lot of you who don't have the Metropolis palette were like, well, I'm excited about this, and yeah, that's awesome. I mean, that would probably shoot it above higher on your list of favorites, but for me, it just wasn't exciting. I like the color story. I don't love it. These colors are easily dupable. You take the blue out. I mean, this is the most boring palette ever, but quality is really great. Just haven't really reached for it since the holidays. Number 29 is actually the palette that I'm wearing today. Now, I'm not gonna lie. I have not used this palette until today. So I bought this for Black Friday. It's a palette that hasn't really been relevant to talk about on my channel. It's one that nobody really has, but I picked it up because I got it on a super good deal for Black Friday. This is the Eyeshadow Palette 10, and I had never thought twice about this palette. Then it went on super deep sale. Now that I'm so into cool tones, I actually was really excited about this. But again, I I try so many eyeshadows this just wasn't relevant for me to talk about on my channel but today I did use it for the first time and it was a little messy I'm not gonna lie like ugh, powder flew everywhere these are darker cooler tones shades like that typically tend to make a mess it took me a lot longer to create this look than I thought I'm mostly wearing these three with a couple other tones in here paired together and I like this palette a lot it's not gonna be one that I end up reaching for all the time because it is more smoky tones had a lot of fun with it quality is pretty good just make sure you don't do your face makeup first. But yeah, this isn't going to be a palette that I reach for a lot, but it's an interesting array of colors here. And I had a lot of fun with it today, and I'm excited to use this palette more. And just the fact of that excitement 
helps rank this higher because it's an exciting palette to me and it's different and nobody really talks about it but it's great and i was pretty sure you couldn't get that anywhere and then i did see that it actually is available on look fantastic 28 is from the holidays a few years ago but she actually relaunched this recently this is the joya palette and how fun is this i don't reach for it a ton so that's why it's ranking where it's ranking but the color story here is really beautiful i do enjoy the quality this is like og natasha denona to me because it first came out when i started getting into Natasha Denona for the first time and it's just a special little quint. I like it. 27 is the other palette that came out from that holiday collection. So same story that she relaunched this in the last year. This is the Eris palette and honestly it is prettier than the Joya palette to me. I'm more inclined to reach for it. I love this blue shade right here. I'm not going to open it. One of my colors be popping out and it's so annoying but I like this one just a little bit better than the Joya palette. 26. This is one of my most used Natasha Denona palettes but I do have some gripes with it. This is the bronze palette. If you love bronzy looks I do recommend this. It's extremely warm but there are deeper warm tones here but I will say every look you do I just feel like kind of looks the same. You don't have much variety in here so only buy this palette if you like bronzy looks but I've had a lot of fun with this I've enjoyed the color story and all of that but it's true that you're not getting too much variety with this so just keep that in mind but <laughs> I like it though 25 is the mini xenon palette and I have fun with a really cool smoky palette like this I have a few in my collection now though that are like this I know ColourPop has one that is basically an exact dupe of this and honestly I kind of like the quality of the ColourPop a little bit better the black here is a little skippy but nonetheless I do like this palette it's not one that I'm gonna reach for a lot but I think it's really great to be able to have these tones in such a compact little guy because how often are you going to reach for these tones anyways? So for those of you who are more selective with the products that you bring into your collection, I think this one is great because it's a good price, pretty good quality, and allows you to have these tones without buying an obnoxiously large palette. I would recommend the ColourPop over this one, but yeah, this is a nice guy that comes in handy. 24 is the mini retro palette. So this is pretty at the end of the day. Very, very pretty palette. That's why it's not towards the rock bottom here, but it's not the best quality. Like this shade, I feel like it looks super duper gray on me. I wish it was just a little bit more olivey. I think the olive would have made a beautiful turn to this palette and really elevated it. And this shade has some hard pan right here, but at the end of the day, I feel like the looks that you get are really pretty with this. The color story is quite unique. She does have a big retro palette out, as you know, and it does not look like this, which is disappointing because this color story is so fun. I'd love to see like a greeny, grayish, pinky toned palette like this come out. It's so pretty. 23 is the newest palette that Natasha Denona just recently dropped. This is the mini crush palette. And I stand by what I said in my review. I like this palette, but it is not my favorite. I think she has prettier pinky purpley palettes. So the quality in here is really nice and I know a lot of you did like this color story but I'm not so inclined to reach for super bright pink colors anymore and if I am this is not the palette that I would grab for but I do like the quality. I do like the looks that I can get with this. It's fairly new to my collection so this could be adjusted eventually but right now I think this is where it sits. 22, another very often used one by me. This is the Safari palette. So I don't believe this one is available anymore, but it's an all matte palette and it just comes in handy, you guys. When you want some good quality mattes, I actually really love the tones here. I love that there's a warm row. I love that there's a cool like mauve row. I love that there's like a true cool toned row up here. I really like the quality of these. I find them to be super buttery. They blend so, so easily. So this has been a great guy to have on hand. It's not as exciting to me because it is an all matte palette, but it is one that I reach for a lot. 20, this is one that has grown on me in the last year. This actually would have been towards the bottom a couple years ago because I wasn't moved by it, but this is the Lila palette. I've since purchased a fresh one for myself because I do really enjoy this color story. Now, if you're new here, I love purples. Mobby purple eyes are my all-time favorite, so that is why this is ranking a little bit higher now. Look, these first two rows, like, give it to me. It's so stunning. You 
also have some like warmer pinky purple tones down here which I really like. So yeah, um, I used to not like this palette but now my color preferences has changed and I really love this palette now. The quality is really great. This is where things start getting really really difficult for me because now I'm at the point where I love all of these palettes coming up. So don't question me on these placements, okay? It was stressful <laughs> enough for me but I really do like this one. I wish we had more variations in the matte tones here. I want a deep deep matte plum in here so there are some shades that I feel like are missing. It's a lot of pink shimmers that I don't think have enough variety in depth so that's why it's like not towards my top 10 or anything but I still love this one. 20 we have the mini star palette. This one is just a really fun one. I don't reach for it as much as I wish I would. I actually should reach for this one very soon. I just don't use it as much but it's super duper pretty. This one has no rhyme or reason. This is just where it fell. It's a good one. 19 is the mini glam palette. This is one of my favorite mini ones that she has because I love those cooler tone neutrals. How pretty is this one? The quality is really nice. Again, nothing bad to say about it. It's obviously just not going to be as exciting as the bigger palettes, but I do love this one for travel. The tones in here are something that I'm very, very comfortable with. 18 is good old camel palette. This is a staple I know in so many of your guys' routines. It is beautiful. The colors here are gray everyday neutral colors, which as you guys know, I am a neutral girl at heart, so this one really excites me. The quality is fantastic. It's just one of those great staple palettes that you want to reach for and you know is always going to work well. But it's also boring, you know? 17 is the mini Biba palette. This is a newer one, and I've been enjoying this one a lot. It's not my favorite palette in the line. Like, it's kind of boring. We're towards the middle here. I really, really like it. It's more boring. It doesn't excite me. But at the end of the day, it's one of those color stories that I'm going to reach for. I'm kind of thinking, though. I don't know that I'm happy that this is ranking above the mini glam. I I think I like the mini glam better than this, but this shade right here is so, 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 so pretty. The colors blend nice. I don't have any issues with this. It's just like an easy to grab for kind of palette. 16 is the Glam Face Palette. So this is another Glam palette in the line. Now this also has a blush and a highlight, but I still wanted to put it in here. This would have ranked a lot higher, but my blush has already dried out. So let's take the blush out of it. I did take it into consideration for this rankings because it has such a high value in this palette for the price that you pay. Yes, the blush dried out. That's why it's not at the top top because I really love this palette. These eyeshadows, chef's kiss. My ideal everyday eyeshadows. They have really glimmery metallic shades here, which is another reason that I love this so much. Great everyday tones here. Love this, but the blush dried out. 15. This is an underrated palette for, to me. It's like such an underdog. This is the Trio Chrome palette. I love this. So first of all, I'm not gonna lie, like the tr the Trio, what are these? The multi-chromes down the center here? They definitely are not that good. If you're at all familiar with like indie shadows, these don't hold a candle. Like no, they suck <laughs> compared to indie shadows. But a strong suit in this palette for me are the mattes. This is the most unique array of mattes like I have ever seen. I do not have a palette like this. And for that, that's why it's ranking where it's ranking. Mats are amazing in here, super unique, really, really fun. And I think when this first came out, so many people were underwhelmed by the multi-chromes that we were all like, eh. but at the end of the day, we did not take into consideration how amazing these mattes were. Like not only are these super duper unique and well thought out, but they also are super duper blendable and great. So love that one. 14 is the mini gold palette. This I think is my favorite. Oh, it's not my favorite. I have more favorites, but this is definitely one of my favorite mini palettes. I just think the color story is so beautiful. I'm so happy Natasha went there with this. And I feel like Natasha has, has played it pretty safe with her minis lately. I want her to create more unique color stories like this, something that's a little bit more daring. I just feel like I'd be more inclined to buy it at a cheaper price point, right? And this one is great. So pretty if you're into those like olive -y, greeny kind of looks. 13, this is one that climbed on my list recently. I actually used this the other day and I'm sad because it's actually leaving my collection, but this is the 
star palette. I used to not like this palette. This used to rank pretty low, but lately I've been super into it. Like it's two different looks. I don't like the layout of this. Visually, it does not please my eyes that there is this split. I think I would have liked this palette a lot more in the beginning if this split here wasn't there. But anyways, I see why there is a split. I see the different looks. You have such a pretty kind of neutral toned option towards the top here. So, and it's gorgeous. And then towards the bottom here, you have more pinky, mauve kind of tones. So pretty the looks that you can get with this. I just totally an underdog as well in my collection. 12. Okay, this is not the most impressive quality, but I'm impressed with how much I use this. This is the Love Palette. This came out a couple years ago for Valentine's Day, and I love the pinky purple tone, so that's why I think I reached for it a ton. Honestly, you guys, there are some inconsistencies in the quality in here. It's definitely not her best palette that she came out with, but dang if I didn't use this all the time. <laughs> the last year, it slowed down because I was using it way more than my other palettes, and I was like, girl, you gotta use your other palettes. But yeah, I really really love this one. I don't know that I'd recommend it first to you guys because it's not the best quality, but I love, 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 love the colors in it. 11, one that I think deserves a little bit more credit. This is the Circle Local Palette, and obviously this one didn't sell well because it's, it's a loco. It's a very, very colorful story, but I have had so much fun with this palette, and listen, you guys, something about the quality in here is extra rich, extra buttery, extra pigmented, just creme de la creme of quality here but yeah it's not going to be a color story for everybody it's crazy but i mean look what i'm wearing so obviously i'm okay with it honestly you could probably get a look very similar to what i'm wearing right now if you like pull it anyways yeah you could actually mm -hmm, you could get this look anyways i didn't use this palette had so much fun with this this palette inspires me i've done looks mixing like the pinks and the oranges i've done some really cool tone looks there's a lot more variety than you could think with this and i just so fun for me it's been great. Guys, we're already down to the top 10. Let's see. So the first one, number 10, is the Mini Nude Palette. This is one that's leaving my collection and I'm not happy about it. But there's something about this mini that I feel like has the most amazing quality of all her minis. Taking a look, this is definitely by far the one with the best quality. The shimmers are extra creamy, buttery, pigmented. The masks blend beautifully. This is like a great everyday palette for me. It's one that I probably am going to end up purchasing for myself. It's a really, really good one. Definitely one that I would recommend most to you guys. Number nine is the Glam Face Palette in Dark. So I showed you the lighter version earlier. This one is my mom's, but I definitely like it better than the light. First of all, the shadows give you more depth, and I kind of like that. I mean, I like the lighter tones of the lighter ones, but her blush hasn't dried out yet. So I don't know. Maybe mine was defective. I don't know why. But anyways, the blush hasn't dried out yet, so I'm not accounting for that in here. But but if you like these deeper neutral tones, because I do like a smoky eye, this is Yo Girl. It also has really great quality. Highly recommend this one. Love, 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 love the tones in that. Number eight is definitely more of a personal preference. Like I said, I recommend the Mini Nude if you are buying a mini palette, but this is my favorite mini palette. This is the Mini Love because it's those pinky purpley tones. Love this one. Had a lot of fun with this one. This one is like similar feelings to the mini palette where I just use it a ton and it's totally ranking higher than it should in anybody else's but I love this color story I love how she added so many different depths in here there's a lot of variety for only being a five panner you can get so much done with this and so many looks you can do a smoky eye you can do a pink and purple eye you can do a like a lighter eye there's just a lot of options with this considering there are only five shades and they're all five shades that I love. Number seven is the Metropolis palette. Oh my gosh, this is so good. You can't get this anymore and I wish you could because this is one of Natasha Denona's best. Best value, best quality. So you're getting the best of the best in terms of her formula in here and you get a ton of colors and it's it's a wild price, but it's not as wild as the next one that I'm going to show you. It's a really, really warm palette, as you can see, so it's not my favorite colors. But I love the quality, and I love all the options that you can get, so it is one of my favorites. It's definitely one of the best that she's launched, and if you missed out on this, I'm sorry. Like, it is that good. <laughs> Number six is the wild priced one that I was telling you about. This is like over $200. This has the exact same amount of eyeshadows, 
pans as in the metropolis but it's double the product but i'd rather have half the product anyways this is the 28 pan purple blue palette these 28 panners i'm telling you right now are the best quality that you will find from natasha denona she's launched two of these the next one is coming up her quality has been unmatched to these palettes they are so so special i will say okay i want different mattes in here I feel like in some cases it can be hard to create a look in here because we need more matte plums and just complementary mattes. I feel like we have a lot of shimmers going on. You can still get gorgeous looks, don't get me wrong, but I do feel like there's some pieces missing here. Anyways, quality is like the best and you see how beautiful beautiful this is i mean i have nothing really bad else to say about that number five is going to be the other 28 panner in her line this is the brown and green i get asked a lot which 28 panner should you pick up this is probably the one i would recommend the most if you're more of a neutral wearer again there definitely are some mattes missing in here which is ridiculous considering there are 28 pans in here but like a really dark black a really dark dark brown there's mattes missing. There absolutely is. There's some mattes missing to complement these tones over here. So I would love to see these redone. But I mean, the quality is what is ranking these so, so high. It's incredible whenever you use these. Particularly, these 28 panners are the best eyeshadow formula I've ever tried. Period. Like, better than Pat McGrath, you guys. Seriously. Number four, basic girl coming out. <laughs> but the Biba Palette, man. The Biba Palette is it. <laughs> okay? This is like like one of the best neutral palettes that you will ever find on the market in terms of quality and every aspect of a neutral look is really thought out with this palette. Natasha did a fabulous job laying this out. You have warm neutrals, you have some cooler neutrals down towards the bottom, you have more reddish neutrals. It's perfection. The most perfect neutral palette. There's limitations with the shimmers, which honestly, I kind of like it because good neutral looks, I feel like, are more based on the mattes anyways, and then you have some complementary shimmers. It's quality up there and just super well thought out for any neutral look. Number three, this one is just so pretty. I love it. I bought a second one for myself because this was originally my mom's. This is the gold palette. She did a re-promotion for this this year, and once they were gone, they were gone. Mine looks pretty new because it is pretty new. I love this. It's basic enough for the basic girl in me, but it also is a little crazy for when I want to get a little crazy, but still not too crazy because of the shimmers down here. And we got a couple duo chromes down here, but then you also have just every array of neutral gold that you would need. This palette is perfection one of my all-time favorites for a while it was my all-time favorite and i think uh, it just has such good quality the colors are so pretty and i love that you can kind of explore and play around a little bit with these colors down here this one excites me it really inspires me number two i think you guys know my one and two if you watch me at all have to give it to the retro palette now i'm looking and like the metropolis the gold the 28 panners have better quality but i, I love the colors in here so much mauvey this is the ultimate mauve palette if you like those soft pinky mauvey looks this is for you this is like my ultimate valentine's day palette i just feel like natasha thought of me personally when she created this palette a palette that i cannot stop reaching for love these tones tones that i'm super comfortable with and i don't have palettes like this in my collection as well it's quite unique and number one you guys is the exact same reasoning that i have for the retro palette it's just more cool and this is the glam palette this one is my all 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 time favorite natasha denona palette i don't want to go as far as to say it's my all 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 time favorite palette i'm not sure about that but oh these are my favorite everyday tones so good the quality's good there's a lot of dimension to the shimmers here the mattes that she added are just perfection i mean one and two okay the glam and the retro are like neck and neck Glam is number one, but this is like not too far behind. These are both palettes that I had been asking at the time when they launched for the market for. Nobody was giving them to me, and then Natasha gave both of these to me. They are both perfect palettes to me. I love them. Two most favorites. I would say to beginners, if you are like me, you like colors that I like, Glam is a recommendation, Retro is a recommendation, and Biba are probably going to be your safest bets, but there we have it. Those are 
all 39 eyeshadow palettes that I have ever put on my eyes from Natasha Denona and how they rank. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. I'm currently filming a few of these before I move, so it's the season of rankings now. I wanted to get these up in December, but December got past me, so we're doing it now, I guess. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. Thank you so much for being subscribed to my channel and liking this video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys. Have a good one.